Miss Kelly, do you have a second for me? Mom, of course, I have a second. What's up? Is everything all right? It's about tomorrow. Do you have any plans? If not, I have lunch planned with some of my friends, so... I was wondering if I could ask you to drive me to and from the restaurant. Oh, I'm sorry, but I actually have a hospital appointment tomorrow, so... I'm not sure I can really help you out. Huh? Hospital? Uh, like... Wait, you're not getting fertility treatments, are you? Yeah, exactly. You still haven't given up? How much longer are you planning on continuing with treatments? I'm not sure. I haven't really given any thought on quitting. I want to keep trying until I'm satisfied with how much I've tried. Satisfied? Well, how exactly do you plan on being satisfied? You've been at this for almost three years already. You should... give up. You need to get a move on with your life. But both Justin and I want to have a baby, so... I want to keep trying for just a little longer. It's a waste. What? A waste? I know that fertility treatments cost a lot of money. Just to be frank here, it's a waste. Don't you think it's a waste to be throwing away money year after year? Since we both want to do it, it never really crossed my mind at all that it would be a waste of money or time. I'm saying that that logic is a waste. If you spend that kind of money on treatments, you could be saving it or going on vacation overseas. Not to mention, you're a nurse, but you only work part-time. You should work full-time to make sure that you earn more money. You'll be able to save more money for the future, too. I understand that we'd be able to save more money that way. You're probably right about that, but I want to focus on my fertility treatments. Stop making me repeat myself. You need to stop with your fertility treatments and send me money. Send you money? I'm sorry, I'm talking about the money that you always send me to help me out. I'm sorry, I was being so blunt about it. Don't worry about it too much. Uh-huh. What I'm trying to say is, worry about the people that exist before you worry about the kids that don't exist. Do you understand me? My valuable son married you, and this is making all of it go to waste. You need to stop this. What about taking care of me? I'm sure you don't care about me at all, do you? I'm getting turned down for being taken to and from my lunch tomorrow. <sighs> I'm so sad. I thought we were family, but apparently you don't really consider us the same way, do you? <sighs> I'm sorry, I really didn't mean anything by that. If I've offended you, I'm really sorry about that. If you can't take me tomorrow, can you take me to the hot springs next month? I wanted to go on vacation because I haven't gone in a long time. Come on, you can do that for me, right? We don't have to go far. It can be close. Hot springs, huh? I'll talk about it with Justin and see what we can do. You have money to spend on fertility treatments. I'm sure you have enough money to take me on vacation, right? Make sure you put in a good word for me. <coughs> Miss Kelly... I'm struggling a little bit this month. Can you increase the amount of money that you send me for help? Mom, I have to ask, what exactly are you spending all of your money on? We literally sent you extra the other day and you've already spent all of it? Justin and I are both out of money to spare. I have a lot of things that I need to handle. Besides, you two quit your fertility treatment, right? I know that you two have stopped going to the hospital recently. Wait. Why didn't you tell me before I found out on my own anyway? You really could have said something, couldn't you? I'm sorry, we had our timing to tell you. What are you talking about timing, lol? I'm sure you were just spending the extra money on your own greed and fooling around on your own, right? You realize that adults shouldn't be doing that, right? You need to act like a grown-up. I mean, at least you don't have any more money you're wasting on your fertility treatments, so that's a win. Now you can start sending me more money as a thank you, lol. I'm not using it on any kind of leisure, and it wasn't a waste for me to spend money on fertility treatments. And the only reason we were sending you money to begin with was because you said you needed money to spend on daily necessities. You remember the first time you asked us for help, right? It's not like we have a lot of money to spare to begin with. 
I really hope you understand where I'm coming from. If you have money to spare on fertility treatments, you definitely have spare money to send to me, right? LOL. Besides, what exactly can a woman like you, who can't even have kids, do? Tell me. You can only work and make money, right? If I'm not complaining that I can't have a grandchild soon, it only makes sense, right? Makes sense, huh? Ah, I have an idea. Why don't you just become a full-time employee somewhere? Then you can make more money than a part-time job. You'll even get bonuses from that. You should definitely do that instead. Just give up on a kid, okay? Just quit your stupid part-time job, lol. A woman who can't even give birth just needs to focus on work, lol. Mom, I'm not working anymore. Huh? I quit my job because we found out that I was pregnant. That's why we won't be able to send you any kind of money anymore. Huh? Pregnant? Did you mistype that or... You're infertile, right? Yes. You were getting treatments for it, right? Yes, I was. I really had a difficult time getting pregnant, but we were able to make a baby. Are you telling me the truth? I am telling you nothing but the truth. Would you like to see proof of my pregnancy? I don't need to see any proof. I mean, it doesn't really matter though. Who knows if the baby will successfully make it to term, right? There are a lot of risks, am I right, LMAO? How could you be so disgusting? I was so glad to have put distance between you and our family. Put distance? What exactly are you talking about, LOL? We all actually moved. Huh? We all moved out of that town last night. Moved out? Where? Wait, where is Justin then? Justin quit his job? It has nothing to do with you anymore, so you don't need to worry about a thing. Of course it has to do with me. I'm his mother, and your mother-in-law. I mean, yeah, I guess it says that on the papers, but... We have always wanted to cut ties with you. Both of us. Justin is saying that too? I don't believe it. That would never happen. He's such a kind soul. He would never do that. Yeah, you're right. Justin is an incredibly kind person. That's exactly why he got tired of your day-to-day -day behavior. He just couldn't get over the attitude you had towards me, and especially the things you were telling me while we were trying to get pregnant. Attitude? Things I said? What are you talking about? Remember all the terrible things you told me while I was getting the fertility treatments? Here, let me jog your memory. Fertility treatments are basically a waste. You're just burning money away. Waste. Terrible. Easy. Send money. The attitude you had where you felt entitled to have us send you money every other week. We were almost hopeless, but kept trying to get pregnant while we got treatment. Everything you said hit us right where it hurt, and it was very distasteful to say the least. We're family. I just had to tell you the truth. Calm down. I had no intention of hurting either one of you. You should know that. You really can't understand such a simple concept. I see. Okay, then let me just tell you the truth, as family. The money that Justin and I earn from our hard work is not money for you to spend. I was always irritated by how insensitive you were. Your ideas of only ever caring about yourself. I'm sure everyone around you hates you and talks about you behind your back, too. You were even tricked by the person you cheated on with. I was surprised to know that the money we were sending you was just being used by some man. You should have seen the look on Justin's face. Oh, your husband knows everything that we know, by the way. He says he's going to divorce you right away. That's why he's not even home yet, right? Oh, well. Why would he be there? He moved with us. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I offend you? I just had to tell you the truth. As family. Oh, wait. This isn't just my truth. It's a literal fact, lol. What are you talking about? He's away on vacation with one of his friends. Oh, that's a total lie. What? Hang on. What are you talking about me cheating too? Please stop spewing bullshit. It's really tiring me. Huh? <laughs> Bullshit, huh? You think so? 
I'm staring at a picture of you going into a hotel with some man. That's so strange. What exactly were you two doing in this photo then? Are you trying to get revenge now or something? You're seriously such a cutthroat bitch, you know that? The only reason you couldn't get pregnant was because of how rotten your personality was. I'm sure even if you have a baby, it'll have some kind of deformity or live a terrible life. I don't really care what you think. You can say whatever you want. Oh, actually, I have a little message for you from Dad. I'm going to leave the whole divorce up to the lawyers. So he's saying that from now on. Make sure you talk to his lawyers about anything you want to tell him. Sure, I'll divorce him, no problem, lol. I don't care about a shitty, good-for-nothing man like that anyway. You just remember what you've done to me. <coughs> Miss Kelly, please. I need you to tell me where you guys are. I have really repented and looked back on all my mistakes. Just like you were saying, I was being fooled by the person I was in a relationship with. He had claimed that he ran a business, but the reality of it was that he was jobless. And he was even married. Can you believe that? I told him the truth, that I was already married. Mom, you really have to stop contacting me. I have made it so that you can contact me in case of an emergency until the divorce is finalized. That's the only reason I haven't blocked you. If you keep contacting me like this, I will have my lawyer figure something out. This is an emergency to me! I want to apologize to my husband correctly, too. Please give me another chance! I can't do that. I have no intention of ever forgiving you. Justin and Dad both say they have seen even less intention of forgiving you. I've seriously had a change of heart, so please, let me see you guys! I think that someone else should be the judge of whether or not you have had a change of heart. You telling me you've changed doesn't really ring true. Well then, what the hell am I supposed to do? I won't have a place to live. And all of my family members have left me. How am I supposed to continue living? How about you figure that out on your own? I don't want to have a divorce. I don't want to break up. Well, the whole thing started because you were having an affair. And if this keeps going on, I'm sure the divorce will be brought in front of a judge in court. I don't think there's any benefit to you dragging this out. I don't care! If it turns into a court case, I'll be able to see him in court! Ugh, like I said earlier, he has no intention on working things out with you at all. Just let him go already! No! Never! I just can't let it go! It's not fair! I totally understand that. Right? You do understand, right? You didn't give up on your fertility treatments till you finally got pregnant, right? That's proof that you shouldn't give up until you feel like you've exhausted all your options. But you told me this once. You need to move on with your life. I feel like that's the exact advice you need to follow right now, don't you think? LMAO. The only reason that we figured out her affair and where the money was going was because of my father-in-law asking us for some advice. He had figured that she was cheating on him, so he hired a PI to get evidence of the affair. And since Justin was considering changing jobs and I was pregnant, he figured that he would just make the change and move out with us to get away from her. He had always been a kind man ever since I've known him. He's always protected us from the crazy and wild mom. At first, he was hesitant to move in with us because he didn't want to bother us. But I was totally fine with the whole idea. If anything... I'm more happy that he lives with us. And while we were all enjoying our new lives, my mother-in-law was being sued by the man's wife. And she was also struggling to pay for herself. Apparently, she's struggling pretty badly. The neighbors and her relatives are all keeping her at arm's distance because of her behavior. No one is there to help her out. I mean, she brought everything on herself, so I really don't feel like I pity her at all. The other day, I was able to give birth to a child between my husband and I. He's adorable, and I really can't believe how much I love him. He's too cute that I completely forget about that woman. My father-in-law's court case was also over, and he was successfully a divorced man. She wanted to try to drag the whole thing out to make sure that they were still technically in a relationship, but... She was apparently struggling pretty dang bad in her private life. The second that he said he was going to completely get rid of all compensation, 
she agreed to get a divorce real quick. <laughs> it's really a sad story till the very end. But we didn't care at all about the fact that we wouldn't be receiving any compensation either. If anything, we thought that it was much more important and valuable for us to move away from her as soon as possible. You really can't underestimate the strength of your child, though. They have the power to lift your spirits, even when you're at your lowest low. I hope to live life to the fullest with my new family of four. I'm happy to say that my life is incredible right now. Ron, I don't know what to do. My dad just got taken away in an ambulance. Your dad? Don't joke about stuff like that. <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm serious. What? Seriously? When? Just now. I just arrived at the hospital myself. Yeah, seriously? What happened? How is he? Well, he just collapsed all of a sudden. I have no idea why or what's going to happen to him. Uh, seriously? Your dad is pretty old though, right? Well, yeah, he is, but that's not the point. Sorry, babe, but I'm on holiday right now. I'd love to come home if I could, but that just ain't gonna be possible right now, sweet cheeks. Yeah, I know. And to tell you the truth, I'd be a little annoyed if you did ask me to come home. <laughs> I'm in New York with some of the boys from work right now. We're having a blast. Your dad has been a real big help to me, though. I'm grateful for that. If he's still conscious, pass the message on for me before he goes, okay, babe? Don't you think you're being a little insensitive? Huh? What do you mean? Parents go before their kids. It's just the way of the world. He ain't exactly a spring chicken anymore. Can't be helped. That may be so, but the way you're speaking about him is disrespectful. You're acting like he's already dead. He's done so much for you, Ron. Treated you like his own son. You don't have to be so callous. Yeah, you're right. Your dad's been a big help. I'd be knee-deep in a river of the brown stuff if not for him, figuratively speaking. <laughs> it ain't like I didn't repay the favor, though. Been caring for him for a long time since he stopped being able to get around on his own, you know. Then there was the taking him to and from the hospital. My car was basically his personal taxi. It's not like I didn't have things to do, Donna. I'm a busy guy with a lot on my plate. I know it must be tough to go through this on your own, but you got this! I'm really scared. I feel lost and I don't know what to do. Grow up, babe. You ain't 12 anymore. <laughs> it's plain as day you're trying to make me feel guilty so I drop everything and rush home. <laughs> oh yeah, what about what's his name? Your relative. That guy, I can't remember his name for the life of me. Come to think of it, he lives close by, right? Why not just give him the quick rundown and broadcast your SOS to him? Dad told me not to tell you this because he didn't want to interrupt your holiday. But he said he wants to see you. Won't you just come, Ron? It'd make him happy. He thinks a lot of you. Man, what a drag. Can't you take a hint, woman? I've got everything pinned on this holiday. When do I ever get the chance to go on vacation with my boss? Like how I'm letting your dad jeopardize this. Plus, all my coworkers are here. I'd look like a dunce in front of the whole company. It wouldn't be an over-exaggeration to say that if I can butter my boss up real nicely here, get him to see my strong points and understand what a swell guy I am, he'll realize I'm the guy to promote. And my future at this company will be secure. I'll be going places, babe. Going places! I see. Tell me, Ron. Just what is my father to you? Hmm, let me think. A stranger? Heh, <laughs> that wasn't a very imaginative answer, was it? What I mean is, anyone who isn't me is basically a stranger. You don't think of my dad as family? Come on, surely you know he's not really that big a deal to me. Anyway, all I do is work. And you want to know why that is, Donna? It's to provide for you. I work long, hard hours to make sure you have everything you need and don't suffer. I'm really pleased about that. 
But if it's not like I have no money either, I am working myself, you know. Rather than that, I wish you'd help me out with some stuff sometimes. Like caring for my dad and the housework. You say you do what you do for me, but I feel like you're never actually there for me. It's all just empty gestures. I wish we could spend more time as a family. Without that, what's all the work for? You work? <laughs> You're not exactly on a CEO salary, are you, babe? You bring home pocket change at best. <laughs> Plus, looks like I know how you really feel about me now. Is this how you repay me for the long hours I slave away at the office for you? My feelings for you just fizzled out, babe. Fizzled out? Why am I being told my husband no longer has feelings for me when my dad's lying seriously ill in a hospital bed? Why aren't you by my side the one time I need you more than ever? Listen, Donna, I get it. Your mom ain't around anymore and you're lonely. Seriously, babe? <laughs> Don't you think you're laying a whole damsel in distress act a bit thick? What is this, a Greek tragedy? <laughs> ah, that reminds me. What's happening with the will? What? I asked, what's going on with the will? Your dad had some cash put aside, didn't he? I wonder how much I'm gonna get. Donna? I can see the red marks on my messages, you know. You can't run away as soon as it comes to talking money. We gotta discuss this, babe. Hello? My dad just came out of theater. The doctor said the operation was a success. Whoa! Yep. That's amazing! What is? To think, just a few hours ago he was being carried away in an ambulance, floating between the border of life and death. Now he's absolutely fine! Modern medicine is amazing when you think about it. It sure is. <laughs> Donna? You're not mad, are you? You sulking? Why? Huh? Why what? Do you really not get it? Come on, babe. How many times I gotta tell you? I'm on an important work vacation right now. It ain't my fault I can't come. Besides, even if your dad really was at death's door, supposing I did come back, I wouldn't make it in time to see him kick the bucket anyway. So why should I ruin my work vacation over it? That's irrelevant anyway. What's important is the operation was successful. Everything turned out just great for you. I'm trembling with fear. And what does turned out great for me mean? Are you not pleased? Well, the operation was a success, wasn't it? Is that the only thing you can say? I barely recognize you anymore, Ron. Who is this horrible person and where did he come from? Why are you being such a drama queen, babe? Stop blowing everything out of proportion! <laughs> I'm not overblowing anything. Oh, yeah? Here's a little thought experiment for you, then. Let's say, for example, my dad got taken to the hospital while you were taking an exam that your promotion depended on. Would you just get up and walk out of the exam to go and see him? Just because he'd been carried off in an ambulance? You wouldn't, would you? I'd go in a heartbeat. Don't be ridiculous, babe. Of course you wouldn't. <laughs> You're just lying so you can feel snug and self-righteous. I'd go because it's the decent thing to do. I'd go because family is about looking out for each other. It's not like he raised you, babe. Why would you go? What's in it for you? You should think more carefully before you speak. Like I said before, strangers. You and my dad, me and yours. We're all strangers. Me and you aren't blood related. So why would you have any interest in what's going on with my dad? That's just weird, babe. <laughs> You're gonna run into misfortune one day if you keep going through life with those silly naive ideas of yours. Regardless, I'd still want to help others even if they might be strangers, as you put it. Didn't you say the same thing when we got married? 
You said that was one of your favorite things about me. Huh? Oh, hmm. Let me think. Let me think. Maybe I did say that. Anyway, I don't remember. I probably didn't. Still, you gotta face the harsh truth of the world for once, babe. It's easy to make yourself feel good with wishy-washy platitudes. But when reality comes knocking, we gotta face the music. If I started thinking like you, the size of my family would double overnight. And suddenly, I'd have a small army of people causing me problems on the reg. Anyway, where was I? Speaking of facing reality, we have something more important to discuss. Your dad's will. What's the situation? Uh, this again? We got talking about it earlier. I'm just carrying on where things left off. This is the natural flow of the conversation, sweet cheeks. Your dad's got a lot of money, right? It's only natural to get curious at a time like this. I'm at a bar with the boys right now, and I can barely sit still for thinking about it. <laughs> if I was in his shoes, I'd make sure to get my money situation straight before I kick the bucket. <laughs> you have a duty to do that when you're old and rich. It probably feels good to divide your money and property between your kids, knowing how much you'll be helping out your loved ones. <laughs> I wonder how much I'll get. 30%? 50%? Hopefully more. <laughs> you better not try and keep the old man's money all to yourself. Sharon's Karen. <laughs> None. Because you'll be the one paying. Huh? I'm more or less done with the procedures on my end. All I need is your signature. Wait, what? What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. There's one more thing you should probably know. There's a strong chance this will lead to your holiday being canceled. It's a real shame you're gonna have to pull your nose out of the boss's backside, huh? Hold up, woman. The heck you talking about? <laughs> what happened to you all of a sudden? Where did the fragile, grief-stricken Donna from a few minutes ago disappear to? I don't have the fanciest idea what you're talking about. It actually got cancelled. Word is that the whole company is heading home on the first flight tomorrow morning. What the hell did you do? I didn't do anything. All I did was broadcast the SOS like you told me. Huh? You know, the relative who lives close by you mentioned earlier. He's one of the chief execs at your company. What? <sighs> didn't his surname give it away? My dad's side of the family have a pretty distinctive surname. I did think you'd have recognized it when you heard it sometime at work. What with him being a chief exec and all. Ah, <sighs> you're even duller than I thought. Huh? You're related to one of the chief executives at my work? This can't be real! What did you tell me? You've never mentioned it before! He's your relative? He's my dad's older brother. He's my uncle. No, 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 no! This can't be happening! Why did you keep quiet this whole time? My uncle especially asked me not to mention it. <sighs> he said he wanted to see your true ability and how you operated on a day-to-day -day basis without the risk of you sucking up to him because of who he is. Plus, if he was seen to be overly familiar with family, his reputation as a serious, dignified businessman he's cultivated over the years would take a hit and people would stop taking him seriously. No way! But don't worry, thanks to your behavior today, he's finally seen you for what you are. A rotten, despicable excuse of a human being, as he puts it. Huh? Your shot at that promotion is well and truly dead in the water. <laughs> the irony is, if you hadn't lost your mind over the prospect of getting your greedy mitts all over my dad's will, and instead shown such loyalty to your family that you were willing to go to the links of putting a super important work vacation on hold, you probably would have actually landed the promotion. <laughs> oh well. Ah! I've had enough! You're an awful human being, Donna! There are probably demons in hell nicer than you! I don't care if I get fired anyway! <laughs>
In any case, I'm gonna be getting a hefty chunk of your dad's inheritance. I can live comfortably off that. Listen, Ron, the thing is, you won't be getting a single cent. Babe, you're just talking silly now. I know you're probably feeling desperate, but please face reality. <laughs> you're his eldest daughter, and I took your surname when we married, which basically makes me the equivalent of his eldest son. That makes me his family, which means I'm in line to receive a tidy sum. <laughs> What's that? Can't you read English? It's what's known as a written acknowledgement of debt, or in layman's terms, an IOU. You wrote it four years ago. Huh? <sighs> Did you forget about the time you tried setting up a business, but it failed, and you ended up getting into debt with some shady black market loan shark? Did you forget how my dad very kindly agreed to take over the repayments for you? What the? But your dad said I didn't have to worry about paying that off anymore. He said he had it covered. Seems like you only remembered the parts that suit you. There was one condition for him paying off your debt. Ring any bells? Anything at all? Or is your head still completely empty? If you really are a big enough dimwit to have forgotten such a vital piece of information, it's written at the bottom of the IOU. Go on, take a look. My dad did make it very clear to you, didn't he? All that I ask in return for paying off this debt is that you make my daughter happy. But he did say that if we ended up divorcing as a result of your actions, he'd cease all payments immediately, and you'd once again be responsible for paying it back in its entirety. Donna, I'm on my way home now. Wait for me. It's too late, Ron. I already spoke to my dad about the divorce. I already told him everything you said about your disgusting attitude about how you spoke about him like he's your personal ATM. What? You didn't have to do that! Tell him it was all just a silly prank! <laughs> Please! Let's just calm down here, okay? I am calm. I'm so sorry, babe. I wasn't there when you needed me most. You should have been in my arms. But I didn't act like the man I should have been. But babe, please! see my point of view it wasn't an easy decision for me to make I was stressing over it like you would believe you've been cracking jokes even though you were stressed out hmm interesting huh I just heard from my uncle he said that you were cracking jokes like it was no one's business at the banquet at some posh hotel he said you looked like you were having the time of your life he asked your boss to keep an eye on you and report back to him how you were acting no, that's all wrong! Well, I mean, I might have made a joke, or several, but that's just my way of grieving, baby! My emotions are complex. I deal with stress in my own unique way! Mm. Donna! Answer the phone! Please, let me explain! I want to apologize! I've been doing a lot of thinking about how I acted. Besides, I have no intention of divorcing you. I won't go along with it. That's fine. I'll just take you to a family court. I've finally seen your true colors, and I want out. We're a mismatch at the cellular level. I'm begging you. That's it. Here's how we fix this, babe. I need you to speak to your uncle and tell him that you're the one who persuaded me to stay on this work vacation. That I did really want to go and see your dad. But you were thinking of my future. You can do that, right? I'm gonna get fired if you don't do something. I don't care. Anyways, by my calculations, you're still in about $25,000 of debt. Good luck on the repayments, babe. There's no way I can pay that much. That's okay. You can always borrow more from the black market loan shark. How the hell am I supposed to pay back that much money when there's a strong chance I'm about to get fired? I'd struggle with that much even if I did keep my job! You reap what you sow, Ron. Anyways, it's got nothing to do with me. You're on your own now. It's not like we're blood-related, is it? It's just like you said. We're strangers, after all.
After that, the divorce proceedings went a lot smoother than I expected them to. Why, you ask? Well, my uncle, the chief exec at Ron's company, told him that he was not willing to pull the trigger on firing him this time if he promised to be a willing participant in the divorce. It was decided that his debt would be paid back on the basis of monthly repayments. The whole affair soon made its way into conversations at work. And before long, the entire company was talking about Ron and his questionable attitudes towards other people. Which means Ron's currently trapped inside the hornet's nest. I heard he's desperate to quit and get away from it all, but he can't afford to because of the exorbitant amount of money he owes. He's got no choice but to keep his head down and to continue working to keep up with the debt repayments. In a sense, this turned out to be the best punishment possible. I take my hat off to my uncle for the way he played the whole thing. In other news, a little while after all the drama had died down, my dad finally got discharged from the hospital. When he gets used to moving around again, we're thinking of going on holiday somewhere nice together. Just the two of us, of course. Kevin. I'm very disappointed in you. You'll be paying me compensation for this. I'll never forgive you. Huh? What are you talking about? Nancy? Hello? Where did this come from all of a sudden? Don't Nancy me, you dirtbag. I know what you did. You disgust me. <sighs> this is what all men are like deep down. Cheating is a man's instinct. It's in your blood. This act of yours isn't going to work with me anymore. Um... Basically, you think I'm cheating on you? What gave you that idea? I don't think it, and it's not an idea. I know it's true, so stop trying to gaslight me. Because you are cheating on me. And what's worse, you're not even man enough to admit it. I'm really not. Why even bother playing dumb at this point? The jig's up, Kevin. No, I'm really not. You must be making some kind of misunderstanding. I have photo evidence. There's no way for you to worm your way out of this one. Oh, really? Show me then, because you're 100% making a misunderstanding. Nope, I won't be doing that. I'll be revealing them when I file my request for compensation from you. In the event that you're foolish enough to refuse to pay up, I'll have the perfect trump card up my sleeve. You're absolutely adamant I cheated and nothing I could possibly say will change your mind, huh? <sighs> I've had my suspicions for a while now. You've been coming home later and later recently. Sorry about that. The boss keeps piling overtime on me. Plus, you were humming happily to yourself all morning yesterday. Is it a crime to hum now? Seriously, is this some kind of joke? <laughs> You're an expert liar, Kevin. I'll give you that. But then pathological liars do tend to be good at what they do. That said, you do well not to underestimate a woman's instinct. When you betray someone like this, they don't just wake up the next morning and forget all about it. Listen, Nancy, please, can you just calm down and listen to what I'm saying? I am calm, and I have been this whole time. Oh, you're so patronizing. Would you mind telling me why you think I'm cheating on you then? All you're doing is throwing accusations at me and not giving me a chance to defend myself. Washington Union Station. What about it? You were there yesterday, right? At night? With a woman? I was in the area. Me and some friends had been bar hopping. But there were no women. It was just me and the boys from work. And there it is. <laughs> the lies begin. Listen, Kevin. You see, there's one little problem with your story. I was there too. With my friend. I saw you and her as plain as day with my own eyes. You were linking arms while waiting for a taxi together. Right. And did I get into the taxi with her? Like hell if I know. I was so incensed that I couldn't stand to watch it anymore, so I just took some photos and went home. Did I not go home immediately after that? Damn it, Kevin, I told you I don't know. I stayed the night at my friend's place. I see. I gotta say, I'm not impressed. You should have more substantial proof before you go making accusations this serious. I think you're gonna feel dumb as hell when you realize what was actually going on. Huh? Going on the offensive, are we? I'm hardly going on the offensive. I'm just saying you're wrong. If you actually bother to put some effort into gathering proof instead of jumping to hasty conclusions, you'd soon realize how wrong you are. Just give it up already, Kevin. You've been found out. I have photographic evidence. 
caught red-handed. The woman you saw me with, she was disabled. There were some major delays with the trains last night, so she couldn't ride the subway as planned. She was in trouble, so I helped her. She had tons of luggage, so I helped her to the taxi waiting area. <laughs> Funny how meeting a beautiful woman suddenly turns you into the Good Samaritan, huh? <laughs> you snake. Plus, if she was really disabled, wouldn't she be at home or have a carer? If she was hanging around in the station, she probably wanted guys to hit on her. Ugh, what a poisonous woman. You should be more careful about what you say. Look how quick he is to defend his fair maiden's honor. Oh, she's got you wrapped around her little finger, I see. Wrong. I didn't even get in the taxi with her. After helping get her luggage in the car, we went our separate ways. I got my own taxi home when she left. <laughs> sure you did. I have no idea why you don't believe me. I don't want to hear your lies anymore, Kevin. Me and you are so over. Make sure you check your bank balance tomorrow so you can get ready to pay me the money you're going to owe me soon. Hey, Nancy! What? Not what! What the heck are you doing? Your dad and brother just barged their way into my house! Oh, they did? I did say they didn't have to do that. You told them I was cheating on you, didn't you? They also seemed to think I'd been hitting you? I've never laid hands on you once in my life, and I would never! What the heck are you playing at? You may not have hit me physically, but you did mentally. I told my dad and brother everything when I went home in tears yesterday. <laughs> Seems like what you did upset them so much, they decided to take matters into their own hands. <laughs> I can't pretend you didn't deserve it. You brought this on yourself. Did they mention anything about the compensation? Why the hell would I have to pay you compensation? Not only have I done nothing wrong, but now you're sending family members over to break into my house and assault me? Ugh, quit your whining, you sorry excuse of a man. Please, can you just calm down? Oh, by the way, I also told your company that you cheated on me. <laughs> You'll probably be summoned into the boss's office sometime tomorrow. Things aren't looking great for you, Kevin. Things would be easier if you would just man up and admit what you did. Sorry for the late reply. I was busy filing legal charges against you. You were doing what? I have the contact details of the woman you accused me of cheating on you with. She said she's willing to testify to clear my name. And what grounds would you possibly have to take me to court? <laughs> You're the one who cheated, you moron. Breaking and entering. Huh? Assault. I already filed the police report. I went to the police station with my face still bruised and bloody, so they were more than willing to deal with my claim quickly. <laughs> oh yeah, then there's defamation. That one will be a piece of cake to prove too, since you went spreading slanderous lies around my company. Just hold on a sec. Are you seriously ignoring what you did in filing charges against me? You're human waste. The only human waste here is you. And guess what? It's garbage day. You don't listen to or believe a word I say. You go to extreme measures to ruin my life based on an obvious misunderstanding. I haven't misunderstood anything. You just admitted you and lover girl have each other's phone numbers for crying out loud. If that's not evidence of your filthy misdeeds, I don't know what is. You really are a class A idiot. <laughs> she gave me her business card before she got in the taxi. I paid her taxi fare since she had nothing on her except a prepaid train ticket she could no longer use. That's the worst lie I've ever heard. Whatever, I don't care anymore. I wish you both the best of luck before the judge. Oh, how sweet and romantic. You can even hold hands in court. <laughs> it's not like a cripple's gonna be able to afford a lawyer. <laughs> a cripple? Jesus Christ, Nancy! And do you really think she's paying the legal fees? There's no way I'd let her do that. She represents the national swimming team in the Paralympics. Huh? The only reason we're in contact is because she said she testified to help clear my name because of the vicious lies you're spreading. There's no way I could expect her to cover my legal fees. What do you mean she's in the Paralympics? I'm not that into sports myself, so I don't know much about it. 
but apparently she is an athlete who came all the way from Wisconsin for a tour with her team. She just told me. She's from Wisconsin originally and lives there with her husband. So there's no way she'd have an affair. <laughs> Stop lying. Oh, your pathetic attempts at deception don't fool me anymore. Something tells me this cripple has got a lot more money than you. I'm just glad she's being kind enough to testify for me so I can fight and beat you in court with 100% certainty. You're lying again, Kevin. No sooner do you breathe than you tell lies. You're trying to intimidate me into submission because you're terrified at the prospect of having to pay for what you did. I can read you like a book. I'm done listening to you, Nancy. Give it a rest already. I don't care whether you believe me. I have no interest in engaging with someone with such a distrustful nature who treats baseless assumptions like they're gospel truth. Why are you talking to me like that? Ugh, whatever. There's no going back now. I'll be making preparations for the legal battle on my end, too. I intend to fight you to the very end. Prepare to pay me compensation. I've been meaning to ask you this for a while, but are you serious when you harp on about making me pay compensation? Huh? Of course I'm serious. Why would you even ask me that? Listen, here's the problem. The thing with compensation is, compensation in the event of a fair is paid by the party responsible for the fair to the victim. And this part is key. It can only occur in the context of a legally recognized union. Do you understand that? Huh? Are you making fun of me? I obviously understand that. Me and you aren't married. We're not even engaged. How do you plan on making a compensation claim that doesn't meet the basic definition of what you're shooting for? You're not my wife. <laughs> you didn't know, did you? I take it the fact that you've gone quiet means you're Googling legal definitions like your life depends on it. <laughs> common law marriage? I'm eligible to claim for compensation for an affair in the case of common law marriage. We're living together. Surely that means we classify as common law marriage. Living together? You mean you decided to move into my house without permission? Totally out of the blue three weeks ago. Do you really think common law marriage is going to stand up in court despite the fact we've only been dating for two months? Uh-huh. What? Does this mean I can't sue you? I can't get compensation? You don't have a hope in hell. One other piece of crucial information you seem to be forgetting is that I'm not actually cheating on you. No way. Anyway, even if you withdraw your claims now, I still fully intend on going ahead with waging legal war against you. You crossed the line when you had your brother and dad barge into my house and beat the crap out of me. Wait, please, Kevin. I think I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Will you forgive me? Oh, Kevin, I'm gonna head over to your place now, baby. I have to dress your wounds. You're hurt. Let me look after you, sweetie. Don't bother. Do not come to my house. Why are you being like this? I just want to make things up to you. I just want us to be how we used to be, baby. There's no way we can go back after what you did. To be honest, I never want to see your face again. I will still have to see you again, though. Quite a few times, most likely. In court. It's a real shame. Please, Kevin. I'm begging you. Listen, my head hasn't been in a good place lately, ever since I thought you were cheating on me. I haven't been sleeping or eating properly. I think I'm ill. I can barely even bring myself to leave the house anymore. Yeah, yeah, quit your whining, you sorry excuse of a woman. <laughs> you seemed healthy and full of energy a little while ago when you were making malicious accusations and calling me every name under the sun. What was it you called me? Human waste? <laughs> I just got caught up in the moment. I said that because I was hurting. In any case, I don't want to be involved with the kind of girl who says stuff like that when she gets caught up in the moment. That's not to mention your awful views on disabled people. Kevin, please. I'm begging you. Please, don't take me to court. I can't even stand right now. I feel so ill. I can't even walk. Please, Kevin. I'm suffering here. You seem to be making another misunderstanding. So let me clear this one last thing up for you before I block you 
and we start communicating through our lawyers. You know that thing you said earlier about the disabled athlete I helped being a poisonous woman? I need you to be aware of something very important. The only poisonous woman here is you. A few days later, Nancy's family dragged her over to my place and all got on their knees and apologized to me in unison. On top of the false accusations of me hitting her, it turns out she told them another vicious lie. She told her family I'd been mocking them, saying that her dad and brother were cowards and quote, wouldn't dare break into my house in a million years. Her parents and brother broke down in tears and apologized. A few days later, after some talks, I agreed to settle out of court, at least with her family. Some money was decided on, which I was then paid in full. I couldn't bring myself to take her family to court after realizing she tricked them too. Nancy was totally silent throughout, until her mom slapped her square in the face, at which point she broke down in tears and finally started talking. Apparently, she'd been pouring money into a secret gambling addiction and thought tricking me into paying compensation would be an easy way to get her out of the debt she'd built up. Everyone present was rendered speechless by the shocking revelation. This was obviously the first I'd heard of it too, but it turned out Nancy had an extreme gambling addiction. Her finances had already hit rock bottom a few months back. That's why she thought seeing me help that woman into the taxi was the perfect timing to deploy her devious scheme. I don't think I need to explain why, but after that, I told her parents, Nancy, on the other hand, won't be getting off so lightly. I made clear my intention to take her to court for defamation. False as they may be, rumors like that don't just disappear overnight, and damage was done. As bad as I did feel for her family, I told them they just had to deal with it somehow and saw them out of my house. It was difficult for me to come to terms with the fact that I dated a girl like that and made me question my own judgment. I sent a humble apology to Elena, the Paralympic swimmer I met at the station, for all the trouble she'd been caused throughout this ridiculous episode. But she was adamant I had nothing to apologize for and said it was absolutely fine. I did try to insist, but she changed the subject and invited me to watch her perform at a local sports tournament and offered to return the taxi fare I paid for her. A few days later, a Paralympic ticket showed up in my mailbox. I have no intention of accepting her money for the taxi fare. But this is going to be my first time ever at a major sporting event, and I'm really excited. Being easily moved, I can't discount the possibility that tears will be shed on that day. Elena's warmth and friendliness was the first thing to put a smile on my face since the whole Nancy incident. Ahem, work-related communications coming through. Ruth, it's about the contract with A Company. You know, the one you were responsible for managing? They pulled out and the contract got aborted. It got what? Why would they do that? Don't tell me you're surprised. It's obviously because you're incompetent. That was such an important contract to this company. I mean, really. Talk about the mother of all screw-ups. How do you plan on taking responsibility? Kimberly, I'm really sorry, but I need to make this clear. I was in charge of that project and responsible for all communications between our company and that client. There hasn't even been so much as a hint of a problem until now. Why would they pull out all of a sudden? Listen, Ruth. I've been holding back so as not to upset you. But shall I just come out with it? Not to upset me? What is this, kindergarten? How can I understand the situation if you don't tell me? Anyway, something doesn't quite sit right with me. Why didn't they contact me about the cancellation of the contract? Why you, when you never had anything to do with that project to begin with? Oh, I give up. You're just too dim-witted. That's why there's no hope for you at this company. Excuse me? If you don't even take the time to consider what a client might be thinking, or what kinds of things they might expect from us as a company, or what kind of alterations they might like to see made, how do you expect to get anywhere in this business? This is probably why you're suffering from that strange illness of yours. Strange illness? What was it again? Appendicitis? Ulcerative colitis. Oh yeah, that's the one. Listen, Ruth. When you become an adult and enter society, you have a responsibility to properly look after and manage your own health. 
My illness has nothing to do with whether or not I'm looking after myself properly. It's genetic. Besides, don't change the subject. What does my illness have to do with the cancellation of this contract? I'd appreciate if you kept your comments about my health to yourself, given it's got absolutely nothing to do with you. Because you're defective. What? The client said they had to abort the contract because they didn't feel comfortable doing business with someone who they felt could collapse at any moment. You have to admit, it's too risky from a client's perspective to be engaged in negotiations with someone so sickly and diseased. If that's true, why would their first move be to pull the plug on the project entirely instead of requesting a change of personnel? You're saying the contract itself got cancelled, aren't you? Why couldn't someone like, say you for example, have just stepped in as a pinch hitter to save the project and ensure all of this time and resources that went into it thus far weren't a total waste? Why would I know? Do I look like a mind reader? All I know is that the client said they can't do business with us anymore. Why are you clinging to them so desperately now they're gone? It was all your fault. Maybe if you made some effort not to be so sickly, they wouldn't have left us in the first place. If my illness genuinely was the reason they backed down, then I can only apologize. Unfortunately, this isn't the kind of problem that goes away with a mere apology. Why don't you take a long, hard think about the damage you've done to this company and take responsibility accordingly? Yes, understood. Not understood. What are you going to do? I want detailed suggestions, proposals, a plan of action. How do you intend to make up for this? I'll work to the best of my ability to undo my failure and bring the client back. Wrong answer. What you really need to do is have more awareness of your status as sickly, dead weight at our company. And accordingly, keep your mouth shut, keep your head down, and work silently in the background where you can't cause any further problems. If that's too hard for you, I think you'd make for an excellent coffee girl. I take milk and two sugars. If even that's too difficult, I suggest you start sleeping with the right people because you're doomed to a future of failure and disappointment if you rely solely on your ability to actually do the job. You're an incompetent fool, and everyone knows it. Ah, you're leaving my messages on red. How mature. Sulking, are we? This is exactly what I'm talking about. The moment things become a little inconvenient for you, you bury your head in the sand, even going as far as ignoring your direct superior. You really are beyond help. If I'm honest, I'd rather you just resigned. Good morning, Kimberly. I'm in the middle of a job right now, so I can't talk on the phone. Can I help you with something? Wait, shouldn't you be in the office already? How dare you? Do not screw me around, Ruth. What lies have you been filling the boss's head with? What do you mean? Lies? Don't play dumb. I know exactly what you did. When I pulled into the car park and tried entering the staff door like usual, the company president was stood there blocking my way. He told me never to show my face at work again. No, he didn't just tell me. He yelled until he had goddamn steam coming out of his ears. Oh, wow, that sounds rough. I did hear the boss can be a bit... Passionate at times. That's probably the reason he was able to build such a successful company, though. I don't give a damn about that. All I can think of is that you went off and said something to him. Why else would he fire me? What did you do? Tell me. I didn't do anything at all. All I did was head out this morning to apologize for losing the contract you told me about. What? Think about it. If a project collapses and it's your fault, don't you think offering a sincere apology and requesting the decision be reconsidered after promising to do better is the right and reasonable thing to do? That wasn't just my project after all. People from various departments were involved, and lots of hopes and dreams were pinned on it. Huh? You went to see the client directly? That's right. 
I swallowed my pride, got down on my knees, and apologized. Their project manager rushed out immediately when he saw what was going on, and explained the situation to me in minute detail. Everything, Ruth. I know. You tried stealing that contract from me, didn't you? You lurked in wait for Mr. Grant, the project manager in the office car park, and waited until he finished his meeting. Then, when he got out, you basically forced him to go to dinner with you. You did nothing but badmouth me at the restaurant. Then, when you thought you'd trashed his opinion of me, you started trying to convince him of what a talented and reliable employee you are, Mo. Have you no shame? Then, to top it all off, you invited him to stay the night at a hotel with you. He described his feelings at the time of a complex mixture of shock, disgust, and terror. Being so desperate to go home at that point that he'd do anything to get away from you, but at the same time wanting to avoid handing you the project at all costs. He did the only thing he could think of and proposed aborting the contract entirely. Here's the key point though, he didn't actually want to. But you, feeling you had the ammunition you needed, launched your full frontal assault on me and came up with whatever lies it took to have me held responsible. Even putting it mildly, you're a disgrace. Don't worry though, I already told the section manager everything. Based on what you just told me, it seems like word of what you did made its way into conversation with the president. Why you little, you really shouldn't have done that. Mark my words, you won't get away with this. I'll make you regret it if it's the last thing I do. Prepare yourself, Ruth. There is a storm coming. Do what you like. Just make sure you don't do anything to cause any further trouble for the company. You might have been fired, but this company's done a lot for you, so I hope you've at least got the decency to spare them the nuance of your little revenge campaign. <laughs> Ruth, long time no see. Is now a good time? I have some news for you. What? You're gonna love this. Wait for it. I got married. Oh, that's nice. Congrats. I'm the happiest I've ever been. Listen, Ruth, I've been doing some thinking and I feel so guilty about the trouble I've caused you. I just wanted to take this opportunity to apologize. Oh. If it's about the contract, don't worry. I'm already over it. No, not that. Something else. I stole your fiancé. My fiancé? Who do you mean when you say my fiancé? I'm not engaged to anyone. I've been happily married for a long time. WTF? Um... Wait a sec. This can't be... You're joking, aren't you? Or you're lying because you're so angry. Yes, that must be it, <laughs> lol. It's not a joke and it's not a lie. I'm married, which means I have a husband. Which means I'm not engaged, which means I don't have a fiancé for you to steal. Aha, that's it. I bet you've already had word from him about the engagement being broken off, haven't you? I bet you're sat reminiscing over old photos and crying your eyes out as we speak. Look, I get it. I'm probably the last person you want to admit your heartbreak to. You won't be the only one crying at this rate. You're so pathetic I think I almost feel sorry for you, lol. You must be making some kind of misunderstanding. I'm not misunderstanding anything. I know he's your fiancé. He approached me while I was crying on my own at the car park. On the day the president fired me outside the office, he really is a wonderful man. He could see I was upset and asked me if I needed someone to talk to. That's all well and good, but I don't see how you go from that being dead certain this randomer from the car park is my fiancé. He told me, of course. He said he came to the office to drop something off his fiancé left at home. But he said he just couldn't bear to see such a pretty girl crying and not say anything. I figured out he was your fiancé. Well, we were chatting over a coffee in a local cafe. I'm sorry to say this, 
but he said he found me much more attractive than you, and that I gave him butterflies in his stomach of the kind he hadn't felt since he was a teenager. Things between us began moving really fast after that. We went to bed together that night, and before we knew it, we were discussing marriage. It was then I knew I'd found my soulmate. He sounds like a scammer. Huh? Yep, a marriage scammer. What? Don't be so ridiculous. A marriage scammer, what even is that? Make some sense, woman. We are soulmates. Are you jealous, is that it? Kimberly, it seems like your desire to take revenge on me is clouding your better judgment and impairing your ability to think rationally. That's the most obvious marriage scam I've ever heard of. Did he ask you for money at any point while he wasn't whispering sweet nothings in your ear? Let me guess. Something like an advance payment on the wedding costs, which he empathetically promised he'd give you back later? Huh? How did you know? Yes, he did. But that's hardly unusual. Things are moving really fast between us, so he probably didn't have the funds to get the ball rolling at a moment's notice. This is just how whirlwind romances are. Oh, no, 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 no. You'll never see that money again. I'm pretty familiar with this scam because I had a friend who very nearly fell for the same one a while back. Luckily, she realized what was going on and backed out at the last minute. You, however, such a shame. I'm actually embarrassed for you, Ruth. The lengths you'll go to hide your heartbreak over having your fiancé stolen are bordering on tragic. Please salvage what remains of your dignity by gracefully admitting defeat. Yes, that's right. You lost, and I won. <laughs> I can repeat myself if you like. I'm already married. My husband's abroad on business right now. But I can send you some pictures of us if you like. Oh, please, stop it, Ruth. You can't seriously expect me to believe someone like you could bag yourself a husband. What man in his right mind would have an interest in a sickly little creature like you? We were classmates in high school. We were friends since long before I fell ill. He confessed his love to me after I got my diagnosis. He said the illness was irrelevant to him, and he wanted to be with me because he loved me. Wait a sec. What? So this guy I'm engaged to really isn't your fiancé? Yay, you finally got it! This is kind of what I've been trying to tell you this whole time. I just tried to call him. He won't pick up. What should I do? Help! Not my problem. What? You mean you're not going to help me? This is all your fault. The least you could do is give me some advice. Take responsibility for what you have done. What? This is my fault? So, let me get this straight. First, you tried to steal my contract back when you still had a job and failed miserably. Then, you tried to steal my fiancé, assumed, and failed miserably once again. Is that a fair summary? To top it all off, suddenly I'm the one who's responsible somehow? Really gets the neurons firing. Would you mind explaining which part exactly is my fault? I'm drawing blanks here, lol. <laughs> Don't twist the facts. I want my money back. $40,000 directly into my bank account now. Nope. 40k though? Wow, he took you to the gleaners. It's time you learned how to take responsibility for your own actions, Kimberly. Fine, you win. I'll apologize for what I did. I'm sorry for everything. The contract, trying to steal your fiancé, everything. Can I just have my money back? Please? Not only did he take my entire bank balance, I don't even have a job anymore. How am I supposed to live? Go back and live with your parents then? Or you could, I don't know, find a new job? In any case, I have zero obligation to help you. Please stop talking like that. We used to be co-workers. Ruth, I'm begging you. Ruth! We used to be co-workers? That's literally the least compelling plea for help I've ever heard. Anyway, I'm sure you'll figure out a way to fix this on your own. 
After all, you were always super talented at getting yourself out of difficult situations, weren't you? By sleeping with the right people? <coughs> After that, Kimberly started showing up outside the company office every day, lurking behind cars until I clocked off, at which point she would jump out yelling expletives and harass me relentlessly. However, she was eventually spotted by our notoriously passionate and at times hot-headed company president. He reported her to the police, who came down immediately and bundled her into the back of a car. Apparently, her spirit was so crushed when hit with the reality of what her life had become, she broke down in tears in the police car and was inconsolable by the time she reached the station. Eventually, she somehow or other managed to pull herself together and went home with a caution, promising never to go near me ever again. However, sources tell me she's still vigilantly watching and waiting, biding her time until another opportunity to take her revenge on me presents itself. Rumor has it she's applying for jobs with every one of our competitor companies and hopes to somehow leverage that as her angle to teach me the lesson she's convinced I deserve. The irony is, if she'd just reflect on her own actions for a moment, she could learn the lesson she needs to learn let go of her hatred, and move on with her life. Will she? I'm not holding my breath. Anyway, in more important news, I found out I was pregnant last month. I left the company when I got the news and decided to move abroad to be a stay-at-home housewife for my husband, so the whole thing with Kimberly is as good as ancient history to me now. I'm just praying I'm not unfortunate to bump into her in the street before my flight. Thank you for watching! Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.